Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Golden Hour Knitwear Podcast. My name is Camry. Um, I'm a knitter in Ohio, in the United States. I'll tell you a little bit about myself though, not just a knitter. Um, I, so I grew up in Utah, went to college there. I studied music and psychology, if anybody cares. <laughs> I met my husband, we both played the saxophone in college and met each other. I mean, I studied clarinet, but we both happened to play saxophone and jazz band, met, fell in love, got married, and it's history, just kidding. Um, anyway, so after college, we moved to California for a year. We had our daughter, decided California wasn't for us, or at least where we were living wasn't for us. And my husband had an opportunity elsewhere. Um, so we moved to Ohio. So now we live in Ohio, which is near his family. And we love it here. So I, really quick, I'll tell you why I started this channel. Um, so I decided to start this channel because I wanted to. <laughs> it looked fun. I was seeing everybody else, all the other podcasters not that I consider myself one of the podcasters um, but just seeing everybody else's channels and seeing how much fun they have just creating a community around knitting and sharing what they're creating and just being creative and making friends and hosting events and make alongs and knit alongs and all sorts of things it just looks so fun and I want to be part of the fun so that's where we are a really big thing for me this year I guess is to do what I want for me and not worry about what everybody else thinks. So I've been considering starting this podcast for probably a few months now. And every time I think about it, I'm like, no, what are people going to think of you? Like, you weirdo, don't do it. You weirdo, don't do it. <laughs> but like, for me, that's just my cue to just do it. If, if I'm not doing stuff because of what other people think, that's no reason to not do things. So this is me proving to myself that I can live my life my way and not anybody else's way. So that's what this is. Um, this is me having fun and doing something purely for me. Um, and hopefully I can inspire you all to do the same. Um, and that brings me kind of to the reasoning behind the name Golden Hour Knitwear. Um, I chose the name Golden Hour Knitwear because I love, love the Golden Hour, like, six, seven o'clock when the sun is setting. Um, and I love hitting. I can't really fully explain why I love each of those things. Like I can't quantify it, but I just do. I just love knitting. Whenever I'm knitting, not every time, but sometimes when I'm knitting, I'll be knitting and like, I'm literally just using two sticks and a piece of yarn to make a fabric. What's fun about that? Like, why, why do I find this enjoyable? And then the other little voice in my head says, shut up, no, this is so much fun. This is so enjoyable. Just, it just is. <laughs> and I think a lot of you get that. And same thing with the golden hour, right? Anytime I'm doing something during the golden hour, for some reason, it automatically just becomes a beautiful, magical moment. Um, so another thing about me, I teach um, clarinet and piano at home. Um, and whenever I'm happening, like whenever I happen to teach, clarinet or piano during the golden hour and the sun is just like peeking through the window in my studio it just feels so extra magical even though I'm working I mean teaching isn't exactly work for me I mean it doesn't feel like work but still you know what I mean um or when we're on family walks and it's the golden hour it just feels so magical and good um anytime I'm doing something in the golden hour. It's just magical. Same with knitting. It's just magical. I just love it. Um, and that's my, my, what's the word I'm looking for? My goal? That's my goal with this channel is to only do what makes me feel good. <laughs> um, with this, I don't want to, okay, back up a little bit. I, as I move forward with Golden Hour Knitwear, with this podcast, with my Instagram, someday I might sell hand idea. yarn. Someday I might sell design, my, some patterns. No matter what I do, it has to be something that I love. And it's not something that I'm doing for somebody else or because somebody else loves it and is making me do it. I don't want to fall into the traps or the trends or knit what everybody else is knitting just because they're knitting it if it doesn't make me happy. And if I'm knitting something and it doesn't, feel good to knit and I'm not enjoying it, 
total permission to rip it out because I'm doing this for me. And so Golden Hour Knitwear is a little reminder of that. Camry, do what you love, not what, don't force yourself to do anything because knitting is here for you to chill. And I hope it's the same for you guys. I know it probably is the same for you guys. Um, you know, it's just what you get at the end of the day after all the kids are sleeping or after school or after work or whatever. It's just what you get to do to chill. <laughs> so hopefully Golden Hour Knitwear is a little reminder to just keep it what you love and don't make it stressful. Don't make it full of anxiety. Just have fun and chill, right? That's all it is. Anyways, so all that's out of the way. Welcome. That's me. That's the channel. <laughs> um, let's get into the regular stuff. Um, so little birdies are playing outside the window. <laughs> They're flying in little loop-de-loops around each other. We'll, we'll follow the general format that everybody else follows. Uh, so we'll start with what I'm wearing here. It's a twist loop top by uh, Other Loops. I love her. I love everything that she designs. It's all so good. It's all so good, including this tank top. I love it. I did not use the yarn that it calls for because it's hard to get all the fancy yarns in the U.S. all the time. Um, especially when you're newer and you don't know how to get the fancy yarns and all the special ways that everybody gets the fancy yarns. Um, but I, I just used yarn from my yokel. Local. I always say yokel. Local yarn shop. <laughs> from my local yarn shop. I have to think really carefully when I say it so I don't say yokel. My local yarn shop. There's a, like, a special little room in the back where everything's 50% off. And so my yarn that I used for this the yarn that I used for this I don't even know what this is I've never seen it anywhere else um but kobasi I don't know it's cotton bamboo and silk um by haiku I don't know but it is 55% cotton 16% bamboo 21% elastic nylon and 8% silk so it was originally Eight bucks, but 50% off, four dollars per skein. It's a steal. I used four of these. Really, I used three and a half of the skeins to make this top. So 16 bucks for a sweater, for I mean, for a tank top plus a little leftovers. It's pretty good. And I love it. Um, I was worried I wouldn't like the yarn because it was not fun to knit with. It was stretchy because it's elastic nylon. It was stretchy. And like, like the yarn, stretch. <laughs> And it was, it was hard on my hands because it was stretchy and it wasn't soft. It was kind of scratch. It was pretty scratchy to knit with, um, but all knitted up and blocked and stretched out. It feels great. It's, I mean, it's not like, Ooh, cashmere, but, or silk, but it, I mean, it, it doesn't bother me at all. I'm not particularly sensitive. Birdies are still playing. Um, I'm not super sensitive and it feels great. It doesn't bother me one bit. So love it it's fantastic oh I guess I mean finished objects it's hard to do finished objects on a first podcast episode because you don't know what I've been working on before but the more recent finished objects I'll, I'll share um I guess this counts as a recent finished object um and then another one is these togetherness socks if you as you'll get to know me You'll know that I like to knit free socks, the <laughs> free sock patterns, because um, I feel really weird. A lot of sock patterns are six, seven, eight dollars, and I feel really weird spending that much for a sock pattern. I know a lot of work goes into them and testing and everything, but like, I feel weird spending eight dollars on a sock pattern when I spend the same amount on a sweater pattern. So we'll see. Anyways, so I, I do knit a lot of free sock patterns. I do like to support people, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I just don't have money to just blow on patterns. So I support people with my sweater patterns. And then when I can, I, you know, I do what I can. I do what I can. That's that's what I'll say. I do what I can. So these are the um, Togetherness socks by, I think, This Handmade Life. It's fun. It's this mock rib. I mean, mock um, cable. I have not blocked these or even or even seamed the ends. As you can see, I was trying to 
stuff that in there because I haven't seen them in. I still wear them. I just shove the ends in. And I have the little end wiggling around my toes in here. Um, anyways, you don't even need a cable needle for this, and I love it. Um, I was worried it wouldn't turn out so great with the yarn that I used because it's so variegated or tonal or whatever you want to call it. It's all the same color. It's just very wide variety of the same tone. Very louds, very darks and very lights. Um, but I love it. I think it turned out really great. Um, this is yarn that I dyed. It's like my second or third ever dyed yarn. <laughs> it did not turn out how I wanted it to, but that's okay. It's just an experiment. It's just socks for me to wear around the house. I don't care how it looks. So it's just me experimenting and messing around with techniques. Um, and I actually really love the way it turned out. I love these socks. These are probably my favorite socks, even though it's not what I was going for at all. <laughs> but that's okay. I love them. So that's my togetherness socks. I think by this handmade life, pretty sure. If not, I'll put it down here. Hopefully, I put it down here. Um, okay, part of my finished objects and works in progress is stuff, um, I will be including dyes because, like I said, I dyed the yarn for this. I mess around with dyeing. I'm not, like, a dyer, but I'm a dyer. <laughs> I like to experiment with dyeing because, for me, I like to have nice yarns, but I don't have the money to spend on all the nice yarns. So I like to buy undyed yarn in bulk and then dye it myself. Plus then I can dye exactly what I need and not have tons and tons and tons of leftovers, right? So I think it. I'm still getting nice yarn and I'm having an extra hobby of dyeing, um, but I'm letting my money stretch as far as I can while still having the nice yarns. Um, so I like that a lot. Uh, and I I'll share a little bit more as we go. So, some finished objects, I guess, is these mini skeins that I've dyed more recently. And I know some people would put this in acquisitions, but it's a project. I dyed it. So, it's a finished object. So, I'll start with this one. This one's my favorite. It's yellow. I love yellow. Can you see that? It's hard for me to tell if it's... <sighs> Seriously, no, there it is. Nobody tells you how hard it is to, like, that takes practice. Okay, I think that's so, so pretty. I love it. I dyed three of these. Um, with these socks, I'll just share really quick. I got this whole sock with one mini skein, which is 20 grams of fingering weight, up until about here. So about this much is all I did in another skein. So from here all the way to here, I did with one mini skein. So I realized if I did a shorty sock, I could do it in one skein. So I dyed up three mini skeins in the yellow, and I'll be knitting socks with these for me. I love yellow. Yellow is one of my favorites, especially that. That's I love that. I love that. That's my happy place right there. Speaking of golden hour, that's my happy place. Um, <clears throat> and I dyed those in jars. I dyed that in a pickle jar <laughs> um, with Rit dye. Maybe someday I'll do another video on dyeing yarns and stuff, but that was a lot of fun. So next I have these purples, and I dyed this in an old spaghetti sauce jar. <laughs> um, come on, there we go. That one's pretty too. Um, it's a little bit more varied. I So the spaghetti sauce jar is smaller than the pickle jar. So the yarn was more cramped, so I had some whites left in there. Like you can even see a little bit right here. So I'm perfecting my technique here. I think I know how to avoid this in the future, but this is also still nice. Like it's still nice to have like the little bits of super light purple or white in there. It's just kind of variegated, kind of, kind of tonal, but it's mostly all the same purple, which I love. I think that's so fun. So I am planning on shorty socks with these. If it's not enough, I can do the toe in just some white or something. So that'll be nice. Same with these green ones. I don't know where the other one went. But I have two, oh. Two of these. Also in a spaghetti jar. Mmm, isn't that pretty? <laughs> those are fun too, so I like those. And then this one was a big project for me. This is very different than what I have ever done before. I tried speckles, but I didn't have any citric acid, which is what you use 
with your powder to speckle with so that it strikes faster. I didn't use any acid on this. So my speckles didn't strike fast, so they spread a lot. <laughs> and my gray is darker than I wanted it to be. But maybe I should just show one. Um, it kind of just looks like a zombie, like zombie yarn, zombie yarn, I need to slow down, zombie yarn, like if I had to make or come up with a name for this, it'd be like zombie shirt or zombie mess, I don't know, zombie mess, I don't know, because it just, <laughs> I don't know, what do you think? So I don't love it, it's not what I was going for, but it's not bad, and I'm sure my thoughts will change once it's knit up. I have not knit a gauge swatch yet, or any swatch yet, um, but this is just socks around the house for my husband. I will knit him socks for this with this, um, just to wear around the house when his feet are cold in the winter, so he has some nice wool socks. And it's okay if they're ugly. <laughs> We're both on the same page. It's okay if they're ugly. It's okay if they're interesting. They're just warm socks wearing in the house. So I got to experiment a little bit. And he loves red, so he can, you know. Um, I guess I should say this is 75-25. So 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. It's what this sock is made out of. So, I love it. I mean, I love this. I love the yarn itself. I love these. <laughs> Those are my favorite dyed things that I've dyed so far. Whips. My whips are kind of a mess right now. I don't love all my whips. I love some of my whips. I don't love all my whips. Um, we're just kind of trying to figure stuff out. And hopefully you guys can help me figure some stuff out with my whips. So... Um, let's do this one first. This is my longest going whip, um, and it'll make sense as to why. This <laughs> is a massive blanket. Um, and I have this folded in half. It's herringbone, if you can see. Um, it's made with, let's see, I think it's this one. Yeah, no, yeah, Lion Brand yarns will ease, thick and quick. Um, it's super bulky. 79% acrylic, 20% wool, 1% polyester, because this one has like the the gold strand in it. Um, it's soft, it's nice. I think it's gonna pill a lot, um, but this is, I bought this when I didn't know the difference between fibers, but I like it. it it'll be good, it was affordable, I can't, make a full-size blanket out of pure wool. Like, I just can't do that. Um, so this one will be fun. It'll be, it's gonna, as far as I know right now, it's gonna go on my couch in the living room. Hopefully it matches. I think it's too white to match the rest of my furniture in there, but we'll see. Next up we have my cumulus blouse. And hopefully this will be done by the time you see this episode, this video, this podcast episode this thing um because I'm so close um this I also hand dyed this actually this is super kid silk mohair from nomad all of my undyed yarn right now is from nomad I love them I will explain more a little bit later um but yes this is their super kid silk mohair um I only need three skeins to make this whole thing which is amazing. Sorry, there's sounds going on outside. Um, so I did the whole entire body with two skeins. One, like two strands held together. So it was two 50 gram skeins, just that's it. Um, and I had leftovers. Um, I did the neck in three stitch I cord just because preference, I didn't want it to be super bulky. Um, the bottom I did the four stitch, the top I did three stitch. Um, and I think my gauge could be a little off, but for the extra small, only three skeins of 50 gram, three 50 gram skeins of yarn, that's pretty good. Um, 
I think. I don't know. I don't have experience. This is my first time working with mohair. But here's what it looks like. Um, I will stretch it a lot when I block it because <laughs> I want it to be drapier than it is or um, looser, airier than it is, wider, uh, more positive ease. That's the word. I want it to have more positive ease. Um, but that's not a problem. When I block it, it'll be great. Uh, but I'm so excited about this. I also am not knitting the sleeves full length. It, they go to about right here. This one does. And I did the end also in three stitch I cord instead of four. Come on. Yeah, three stitch instead of four. Just so it's thinner and more delicate, I guess. Um, yeah, I like it. It's super soft. Um, I don't have any other mohair to compare it to. But I think this is really nice mohair. It was nice to work with. It's nice and soft. Um, I'm super excited. This will be more of a cool summer, cool spring, cool fall day shirt, t-shirt, blouse, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm excited about that. Yeah. Um, here's what I have left. Okay. So I took a skein. Whoa. I split it into, so a 50 gram skein, I split it into four 12 gram balls so that I could hold two together for one sleeve and two together for the other sleeve just to make sure I wouldn't run out. Um, this is what I had left after doing one sleeve. I think I have about 12 grams left all to, no, 10, eight grams left all together, eight or nine, something like that, in this all together. So, yeah, about eight, I think nine. Something like that. Uh, so I definitely probably could have done the full length sleeve. So that goes to show that this is a great pattern. It doesn't cause take a whole lot of, I mean, you know, relatively speaking, not like um, some only mohair projects that have mohair held together. Some of them take like six 50 gram skeins, which is twice as expensive, right? Because mohair is expensive. Um, but relatively speaking, that's pretty good, I think. Um, so I'm happy with that one. The next um, project that I have, I started these last night. I wanted a thicker sock that would just be quick and fun to just go through real quick. So I found these, um, I think they're called the Laid Edges sock. It's DK weight, so it's two fingerings held together. And here's what it looks like if it will, if it will focus. <laughs> um, but it, I, this has been fun. I casted this on last night. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. I am enjoying it. It's fun. Um, I think the little edges here are super fun, especially since I'm holding two yarns together. Um, so it's more strandy than if I just did one yarn, one DK weight. Um, but it's fun to use up my extra yarn that I dyed for my togetherness socks because like I said it only used two and a half skeins but the pattern always calls you know the all sock patterns say you need a hundred grams you need a full skein but you never you don't use that much so I have two and a half skeins left so I'm gonna make another pair of socks um and in the future I'm not gonna dye a whole five skeins of yarn mini skeins I'm just gonna dye two or three skeins unless I want super long socks which I never want super long socks, so win-win. Anyway, so that's that, that one's fun. Um, can't tell you too much about it right now, but I'll let you know next time if if it's a great pattern or not. So far it's fun, It's makes sense, it's, it's pretty good, I like it. Okay, <laughs> we're getting into the uh, whips right now. So, so I have this one. This is my mile shirt jacket, which I, I like the pattern. I like the way it looks. I'm super excited about it. I want it. Like sometimes I'm walking around the house and it's cold and I'm like, just wish I had my mile shirt jacket. I can just throw on for a bit until I'm warm. Then I can take it off and I'll be good. But no, it's because I don't love my yarn because I dyed my yarn and I'm still new to dyeing. Um, so here's what my yarn looks like. Not awful. All of my yarn looks similar. So it's good. 
I don't have like problems with consistency or anything. It's just way more variegated than I wanted it to be. Way more tonal. What do you call it? Um, oh, I'm showing you the wrong side. Here's what it, yeah, that's too much for me. Um, my mom and my husband both go, oh, that's so fun. That's so interesting. You should just keep going. And I just can't. I love it. I wanted it all to be a light beige, tan, whatever, and have a few spots here and there that had the dark brown, just like speckles almost, um, and some spots that had gray. And I have a few spots that have the gray. I did good there, but not with the brown. Um, I used the wrong technique, and I knew what technique I wanted to use, but as I went in and doing it, I didn't use that technique as I was dying. I don't know why I changed techniques right as I was doing it and I knew like if I would have used the first idea, like if I would have used the right the technique I was going to use, if I would have used that, I think my yarn would be the way I want it to be. But I didn't use that. And my yarn's not how I want it to be. So I think I'm gonna rip all this out, which is not a lot, but for me it feels like a lot. It did knit up really fast. I'm just sad to rip it out. Because I'm impatient and I don't like to rip out and start over and rip out and start over but I think I'm gonna rip it out and I think I'm gonna dye it all over just a dark brown so instead of a light tan that happened to be super variegated like on camera it looks even worse so that's like just verifying to me that I need to rip it out I'm fine with that in a sock but not so much in a top so I'm gonna rip it out and I'm gonna dye it all a dark dark brown so that's all just the same color. I'm just like Ugh, about it, but I really want the finished project. I just need to dye it and that's stopping me. So that's that. Let's see what else. There's that, there's that. Oh, okay. This one, this one is a, an original. So it started out, oops, is this. So this is thrifted yarn. So I bought a sweater, I pulled it apart, and this is the yarn. And I like the yarn. It's a cotton with a little bit of acrylic blend, but that's the best I could find at the thrift store at the time. And this was the first sweater that I was thrifting, so I didn't really care. But it's nice. I like the pattern. It's fun. But I think this is a light fingering weight on like a three millimeter needle. <laughs> um, it's just dragging on it's taking forever and so it's supposed to be a tank top um, but I as I was going I decided that I wanted oh my goodness sorry as I was going I decided I wanted to have a button band going all the way down the back so or in the front so you could wear it either way you could either have a button in the back or a button down the front depending on which way you wore it. And I was super excited about the idea and I loved it, but the more I work on it, the more I'm like, this just takes forever to knit. And the fabric is so busy that I don't know if we also want little buttons going all the way down, like small buttons going all the way down. It just seems like that's a really busy and super tedious. And I don't know if that's what I wanna do. So I haven't worked on this much at all. Uh, so let me know what you think. Do you like this idea exactly the way it is? Or do we hold two strands double, do more of a DK weight, change it up a little bit, do this instead, and have no button band? And just make a tank top with just this, this on repeat. My goodness. Can you see that? I think you can see that. So what do you think? Just a tank top um, with a little bit of positive ease, I think, I hope. Um, maybe it won't have positive, I don't know, maybe it will, maybe it won't. No, no, I didn't want positive ease. I wanted it to be zero to like one, maybe positive, or like negative, like zero to one negative inches. I don't know, we'll see, Something somewhere around there. Just pretty, fairly tight. Not, not like tight, but like, <laughs> you know. Um, so I do two all together, so DK 
on like four or five millimeter. See, I'm in the US, and I, I, I know it's four millimeter, but I don't know what the US size is. Or do I do my teeny tiny one that is dragging on and taking forever in this fabric, so more delicate? Rip it out and don't do the button band, or should I keep it exactly the way it is with the button band? So three options. Well, I guess for this with a button band, this without a button band, this with a button band, and this without a button band. You tell me. What should we do? Um, let me know, because I don't know. I've been so stuck on this. My heart wants to do this one without a button band because it will just knit so much faster, and I just want to have this done because this has been on my needles and just for so long and like I said my goal is to make knitting just fun and it stress and anxiety free but right now my whips are just driving me nuts so I want your guys's help to help me figure out how to fix this that's another reason I guess for the podcast so you guys can help me make knitting even more enjoyable help me make decisions that I don't know how to make there you go so that's that that's it for my whips. Like I said, I'm not super happy with my whips right now. I only have like one, two and a half projects that are making me super happy right now. <laughs> Other ones are just frustrating. And that's not what I want knitting to be. <laughs> like the goal is to make everything just anxiety free. But part of the reason is that I don't have the funds to just go out and buy whatever yarn I want. So I, or whatever patterns I want. So I'm just like, I'm doing what I can with what I got. So. The goal is to do my best. That's that's what we're doing. We're just doing my best. Okay. So next is acquisitions. Um, but it's more of a, like, this is the yarn I have, and this is what I'm planning on doing with it. Um, and then the yarn that I've got more recently, um, what I'd like to cast on in the not-too-distant future. Um, so let's start with... Should we start with that? Let's start with that. So I have this... We got this in my yokel. There it is again. It said yokel yarn, yokel larn. It's local yarn shop. Um, I have two of these. Um, Rios, whatever. Um, the lady at the yarn store. The worker, the owner, I don't know if she's the worker or the owner, but she said she loves this stuff and she 100% recommends it. She loves it, loves it. She said I would love it too. It's so soft. It is 100% merino wool. Yeah, it's 100% super wash merino wool. It's worsted weight. This is 100 grams. It's the color 855 Aguas. Aguas. By Malabrigo. Malabrigo. I think the base is called Rios. I think that's what all this stuff is. Um, and the plan is to make a shawl for my mom. So my mom actually bought this for me to make her a shawl. Um, still figuring out what shawl to use. I do. I think I know which one. Um, I'll hopefully put a picture up here for you. Um, but yes, it's super soft. I'm excited to work with it. I just haven't started it yet. So that will be started soon. Uh, that'll be fun. Especially because it's thicker, you know, I mean, it's not super fun to work with warm, heavy yarns in the summer because it's hot, but it's also nice to get a break from all the thin yarns, you know, because my fingers just start hurting with all the thin yarns, and it's nice to have this fast, gratifying projects. Okay, um, so I showed you the first original project idea that I was showing you. This one. I have more of that yarn. I have lots more of it. It's a fingering, almost a light fingering. What in the world is that? Anyways, we've got like this chain stitch in here. I don't remember what that is. I don't know what that's all about. Anyways, I have a lot more of this. Um, I think I got around 2,300 yards from that sweater. It was a lot. Um, so I think I definitely want to do that tank. And if I have, I should have enough left over to do a Tulsa tee with this. 
Um, if I hold two double, I would love to hold two together. I dyed some of it blue, so I want to do like marled stripes. So most of it will be this. But when I do the stripes, I'll do one strand of this, one strand of this. So it'll be like thick marled stripes throughout. Maybe that's one idea. Do I have? No, I don't have my swatches, but that's okay. So that's the idea. Maybe, maybe we'll do it. Maybe we won't. We'll see. I really want to do something with a marled stripe though, and that'll be perfect. I have a lot of this stuff too because I thrifted this. So you get a lot of yarn when you thrift sweaters that are like extra, extra, extra large and then pull them out. So I have a lot of this. I would love to knit the strawberry fields tank. I would love to do the strawberry fields tank and the Thea tank. Thea top. I don't know. It's just a tank top, but it's worsted weight. So I would hold like two strands of this with two strands of a black fingering slash like light fingering weight yarn that I also am thrifting or I'm harvesting from a thrifted sweater. So I'll hold, so it'll be like a marled tank of just gray and black. I think that would look fun. So I want to do that. Um, if I have enough of that, that'd be fun. So that's what I'm planning on doing with that. Um, oh, and I, oops. I got this recently. I am excited about this one. This is a cone that I got from another, a different local yarn store from, by me. Um, it, this is a one and a half pounds of yarn and it's 50% baby alpaca or just alpaca and 50% merino wool. And it's locally grown and processed. Is that what you call it? I feel like you only said that for food, but it's locally grown and processed and spun yarn near me, like, like in the neighboring cities around me, which is really fun here in Ohio. Um, and it's a natural color, so it hasn't been dyed. It's really fun. It's a natural brown. It's got a little bit of white stuff throughout. I don't know if you can see it super well. Um, but I want to make the zipper sweater light version um, from Petite Knit with this. And I should have a lot left over to either make a sweater for my daughter or to do stripes on something else. Like a white sweater with brown stripes I think would be really nice. Um, so I'm excited about that. I am super excited about that. I don't know if I should just cast it on now because it would be fun and it would solve my I hate all of my whips problem. <laughs> Or if I would just not enjoy knitting something so warm right now. We'll see. I, I just haven't figured out my summer knitting mojo yet. I'll, I'll figure it out. But until then, summer knitting is just a little frustrating for me. Which is weird. Knitting should be fun. That's the goal. That's just the goal. That's just what we're striving for. It doesn't have to be that way right now. We're just striving for that. Just figuring out my summer whip knits. Summer whips. Summer knits. Okay, and the rest of the yarn that I have to show is undyed yarn that I have plans for. I know what colors I want to dye it, and I know what I want to use it for. Um, so let me grab it all. It's all from the same company, so I'll share that. And I'll link it. Oh! So, dyeing for me, dyeing yarn, is my way of making my money stretch as much as I can. I don't know if I said this already. It's my way of making my money stretch as much as I can, getting nice quality yarn that's hand dyed and beautiful, um, but making my money stretch as far as it can. Um, because like I said, I don't have any money to just throw out and just, oh, I wanna buy this yarn, I'm gonna do it. I can't just do that, right? Um, my husband and I give ourselves a budget, like we like budget every single dollar that we get, and that's what we get, and that's what we do, and we don't go past it. <laughs> So I get to get creative when it comes to buying yarn and patterns and knitting supplies and everything. So my way of doing that is dyeing yarn. Um, so I had some money from birthday money from April. So I put a big order, big for me order in at nomad.com, which I think is a, a fun, creative way, <laughs> name, I mean, because it's, it's, K-N-O-M-A-D for knitting, nomad. Because nomad is not normally spelled with a K, right? <laughs> Pretty sure. I've only seen it spelled this way for a while because I've only knitted, like, dealt with nomad the company, not nomad nomads. Anyways, 
But, so I put in a big order and I was super happy with the order. I, I, it was so fun for me to get that box. So I got two packs of this. And it's 10 skeins of worsted weight undyed yarn. Each skein is 100 grams. Let me get one, let me get one out. This is what it is. It is, it's nice and soft, I like it. It's what I, it's this that I knitted for the mile shirt jacket. This is it, it's soft, I've worked with it, I love it. It's great. Um, so I'm so excited to do all these projects. But like I said, it's summer. I don't know if I wanna work on these sweaters or hold off until winter, fall, fall and winter when it's colder. But this is the marshmallow worsted uh, base, in case you're curious, from nomadyarn.com. Um, it is 100% super wash merino wool, and it's worsted weight. There's 218 yards or 200 meters per skein, which is 100 grams, and it's four ply. So it's way fun. I love it. Um, so I have two packs of 10 skeins, so I have 20 skeins all together. I've already used some for the mile shirt jacket, and my other plans, I've got to pull up my notes for them, my other plans for them is, so the mile shirt jacket, and then the other one is the Gib one. And I didn't write any designer names down, so I will put them on the screen, I hope, for you. Or I will, I mean, I'll definitely put them in the show, like in the description. Um, but the Gib one, uh, I want to do that in a maroon color. I, I want to do that in a maroon color. Um, I recently bought a hat for myself that is maroon, and I was like, whoa, I love this color. So I want to do that exact color. I might put this color up on the screen for you. Um, it's so pretty. I want to do it in that color. Like, I know exactly what color I want to do. Uh, so I want to do it in that color. Um, and then I want to do the structure loop sweater. I love that thing. That was, like, one of the first sweaters that I saw on Instagram that I was like, whoa, I gotta make that thing. <laughs> I love it, it's so pretty. It's so, I just love it. And it's so 100% my style because I'm not like a pretty girl style and I'm not like a cool girl style. I'm just a kind of me, you know, <laughs> like, I don't know what I am, I just, I don't know. I love that though, I love it. And I've been trying to figure out what colors to do. I thought maybe a, like a forest green for the main color and a white for the stripes. And I've seen some other versions on Instagram and I like them. And I was gonna do the green and white, but I just love the original so much. Like the wheat-ish, like the off-white wheat-ish color with the dark gray slash black color. I love that so much. So I'm just gonna do that. That's just what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna do that with these as well. And then I'll have yarn for two more. My shirt jacket, the gib, one, the structure loop soder, and one more. Um, the Aveiro, 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 I don't know, um, sweater. It, that was just cute and fun. That one's also very me. Um, the V-neck, the stripes. I'm a very stripey person, I guess. Um, that one's really fun. I want to do that one in a charcoal gray, like a dark charcoal gray slash black, um, and a white slash off white. So it might just end up being the same colors as the structure loop. Um, so I can dye all the same and not have as much waste or like not worry about yarn chicken and just be able to be like, oh, the leftover is going over to this sweater, not a problem, right? So I might do that. We'll see. They might be a little different from each other. They might be the same. Just it kind of depends on when I want to knit each of them, when I want to tie the yarns for each of them. Um, so when I put in the order for this, all this yarn at Nomad, so I, I got those two packs, two packs of this. I got three skeins of, so that's uh, marshmallow worsted. I got three skeins of their Cirrus base, which is the Super Kid silk, I think it's Super Kid silk mohair, um, that I made my cumulus blouse out of. Um, and then, and I got a pack of 25 mini skeins. So that's what all of these are. Um, I have like nine of these left, and I think I'm just gonna have fun dyeing them. So I'll just have fun dyeing those, and just socks, socks, socks. I love knitting socks. There should always be socks on your needles because they're so easy to just take anywhere you're going. Um, I love them, it's so fun. 
And then um, Nomad was super nice. So this was my first order and in your first order, you could like sign up for their newsletter and you get a coupon with a lot of other places, right? But that's how they know it's your first order. So in the box, I also got like cute little first order gifts. Like I got a cute little tote bag. I'm not, I don't have it in here, so I'm not gonna share. Um, and a little sticker, uh, which is super fun and cute. And they also stuck this in there. I don't know if it was on accident or it wasn't on accident. They were just being nice, I think. Um, because it was on the receipt and it wasn't in my cart when I paid. So I think this is just a cute little gift. This is their egg rep base. Um, it's 100% fine organic merino wool. And then it has a capital G-O-T-S. I don't know what that means. Goths? Um, come on. I don't, yeah. It is fingering. It's a sock weight. But I don't think I would do socks with this because there's no nylon. It's just organic merino wool. It's so soft. I either want to save this, buy more of it, and make a sweater with it, or I want to do a ranunculus with it in either like this color or this color, or just leaving it like this, or, or a maroon, or I want to do a muscle burrow pat. We'll see. Because that sounds really fun. That seems like a pattern that you just need to have a muscle burrow. It just sounds like a pattern you just gotta have in your library of patterns, just to have. I feel like you just gotta have that, because it's such a... Because it, if you don't know what it is, it's... As far as I understand, you can make that hat with any yarn weight and any needle size, because there's like a bunch of gauges. You just knit a swatch, you match it to one of the gauges there, and it tells you what to do, I'm pretty sure. And it has a whole bunch of sizes, so it's just so versatile, versatile, versatile. I don't know how I say that word. <laughs> Anyways, I just, you gotta have that pattern. So I might do that, I might do a ranunculus, I might save it and make another pattern later. I don't know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, so that's fun. That's that. So that is all my yarns. That's all my plans for my yarns, that's all my yarns. That's everything for this episode. That was a wild ride. Um, that was fun. Actually, I was nervous to do this, but as I go, it's just fun and I'm just talking and just getting it all out and being me and this is weird, um, but it's fun. <laughs> um, so that's that. That's me. That's Golden Hour Knitwear Podcast. Um, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Is that what I'm supposed to say? <laughs> um, do the stuff. It helps me out. It gets the algorithm going. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at goldenhour.knitwear. Um, and everything that you need for everything that I showed is on in the description. Um, and as far as the future goes, hopefully the idea, at least, is to post every other week. Just because I don't think I'll have enough to do every week. Um, and I don't want to commit to every week. <laughs> in the future, it would be fun to do like a podcast every week, every other week, and then the other weeks do like my favorite summer knits and a dye video here and knit this with me there, you know, just often, you know, just other ideas. So maybe we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but that's that. I'm going to do a giveaway. Um, and just because it's our first episode, just to say hi, to say thank you for bearing with me for my weirdness of my first episode um, and to get the ball rolling with everything, um, I'm going to do a giveaway. So the giveaway will be five mini skeins um, that I dye. So it'll be in this fashion. So it'll look kind of like this. Not exactly like this um, because I didn't measure what I did for this. Oh my goodness, come on. <laughs> Just focus, whatever, you know what I'm saying. Um, five of these, um, but they're gonna be all different colors. So you're gonna have a yellow, um, blue, I mean, yellow, a purpley, a greeny, there's gonna be a super light bluey and a super light pink. And so you'll have five mini skeins. So you have a chance to five, win five mini skeins, three of these, and then the light blue and the light pink. Um, so you have a chance to win these. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel, Comment below and like this video. 
Um, don't comment the word giveaway. Apparently that brings the weirdos. I don't really know. That's just what all the other YouTube people say. Um, I will never comment to tell you that you won. I will never ask you for money. I will never ask you for personal information, whatever. Um, I will tell you on the next episode um, who won. I'll tell you on the next episode in two weeks who won. And, um, and then you can just comment. So be sure to watch the next episode and then um, message me or whatever, reply to the thing. We can figure out how to get it to you. I mean, this is only open to US people only. Sorry about that. Wish I could do more, but that's what I got right now. <laughs> um, yes. Thank you all for watching. Again, hit that subscribe and like, comment, do all the things. And I will see you next time. Bye. the creator of the channel. <laughs> um, this feels so weird for me. So this all stuff is just weird. Sorry, uh, I'm explaining. So it was just, just bear with me for a second. Oh, okay. <sighs> Do socks count as garments? Next up. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know if that's... Okay. <laughs>